All right, welcome back. Now to continue from where we stopped, Chukwebuka, what do you expect to be done? Because now it seems the milk has already been spilled. I expect them to reverse the policy and provide an alternative. You can no longer use your ATM card to do this, but this is what you can do. Except they are telling us that as Nigerians, we are no longer allowed to do things outside the country with money. Except that is what they are saying. If that is not what they are saying, then they should reverse this policy and provide alternatives. Or at least give some time for us to find our own alternatives. Because apparently, if you're Nigerian, you do everything yourself. The government does nothing for you. So they give us time to find alternatives to be getting money. Because the, just like the other speaker mentioned, those politicians that they, are, they think they are cracking down on, that they cannot get money, these people have liquid cash. They have raw cash. I don't have raw cash. I have the cash only in my ATM. But these people can move money whenever they want to. I cannot. If the government wants to stop the use of ATM cards, bring out specific offices or officers. Put direct flag on specific accounts. If there's a transaction going on here, you would be alerted. Don't, don't punish me because some people are moving the money of Nigeria. If the, go if, the, if the federal government wants to strengthen the Naira, as my other speakers have said earlier on, they should focus more in generating income within the country and also invite, uh, what do you call it, um, investors into the country. So by, so by so doing, they will be able to have more money in the country and actually save us from, all, from, go, from going through all these unnecessary pain, pains and anguish. and anguish. So left to me, they should reverse this law or this policy as soon as possible so as to forestall bad occasions to actually start happening. Because when we are here and we can't do anything, the entire reason is start seeing people going into illegal things. They will, they, will, they, will, they, will, they will start engaging themselves in stuff that actually tarnish the image of the country other than promoting it. Victor, let me, let me come to you now. Um, you are a student union leader in, the, in Ukraine. The policy is already in effect. Has there been any major setback with any of your members? What is the term? Is it a short term or is it for short term or for, or for medium term or for long term? Now, if it's for short term, can it be specifically stated? If it can be specifically stated, that will even help diplomacy. Now, why do I say that? Just this last week, we realized a lady who is in her final year in medical school was expelled because she was not able to come up with her school tuition fee. Now, they were right to expel her because a part of her contract gives them the right, a clause there gives them the right to expel in case of delay for payment of fees. Now, why did she delay that long? Eventually, when her parents were able to get the money, she was not able to withdraw. Now we had to go begging. I, I was in the dean's office alongside the president of the Nigerian Association in my city. We were there, we begged, and thank God a little was able to come out. And also thank God for the uh, doggedness and also the, uh, the diplomacy of the Nigerian embassy here in, in Ukraine. Uh, Ambassador Julius Adefidipe, he, he, he placed calls and he was able to plead, uh, plead his way out. Now, this diplomacy can only be done when there is a set term. For example, we know that this, this, uh, this let me use the word sanction now because it's a sanction. Uh, this sanction will last till February. So now when diplomacy has to be made, you can tell the people involved by February, uh, this will be relaxed. And even people who want to invest, we have a short time they are waiting for to, before they can start doing things. But when that is not done, it's as dangerous as a long-term policy. Now, because nobody knows what will happen, there's, there won't be any stability. And when there's no stability, economy cannot grow. And when economy does not grow, you have to be on the defense. And someone who is wise once said that offense is the best way of defense. There are students who have to pay fees. You know, up till now, because of the fact that we have to travel 26 hours, so the school gave us, I think, until the 15th of January to complete this tuition, right? And right now, we can no longer complete it because the central bank has stopped us from using our cards. Now, we have students that risk expulsion. We have students that risk starvation, hunger. We have students that risk being homeless just because of this policy. We want to make Nigeria great. We want to make the Naira strong. Do you sacrifice us for it? Jesus died already for the salvation of mankind. 
do we in diaspora and we students die for the salvation of Nigeria? If we want to strengthen the Naira, the policies we need to take are policies that will bring in foreign exchanges in the country. Because like every other thing, exchange rates depends on supply and demand. Too many people are focusing on the demand side, which is what the CBN is doing. But we need to also focus on the supply side. What about supply of foreign currency? If you can get more foreign currency into the country through foreign direct investment by stimulating business activities, we can also strengthen the Naira in that way because foreign exchange is coming in. So I think the CBN needs to abandon this fixation about um, we must ensure that the Naira remains stable at all costs. What we should do is for now, let's take the, the hard decision to let Naira float. If we let the Naira float, they will be suffering for now, but let foreign exchange come in, relax this very silly capital controls that is making innocent Nigerians suffer from all over the world. Let foreign exchange come in, help the economy become more productive, and over the next couple of months, we'll begin to see improvements in the foreign exchange posture. That is a far more effective way to help the value of the Naira than doing extremely, because to, for me, it's an extremely silly policy. Even the so-called politicians who are the target of this policy will have their ways of getting around this. All right, thank you all for coming this afternoon and sharing your thoughts, but that's where we have to leave this discussion for now. We take a quick break, and when we return, we'll be joined by Charles Ifayin-Wiki for more analysis. Please stay with us.